So welcome to this first week ahead from quarantine. Yes, I am doing it from home. Like I know a lot of you watching this will be. Uh, we have to make it work, right? And so we are still going to preview what's going to happen in the week ahead. Uh, for me, the main things will be that we're on recession watch and we're looking at economic stimulus uh, from governments, particularly the United States and Germany. Now, uh, let's just review what a crazy week it was again last week. Uh, we saw the British pound hit its lowest level in 35 years against the US dollar. Uh, the US dollar was probably the biggest theme of the week. There was uh, funding shortages overseas, a massive clamour. Obviously, people are just selling out of all the risky assets uh, and, and they want cash in exchange for those investments. And there was just a shortage of cash. The value of the dollar skyrocketed and knocked all sorts of currencies for six. The Australian dollar was down at a 17 year low. The euro dropped down um, into uh, the 108. It was um, quite a big move in the dollar uh, universally. It came back a little bit at the end of the week. Um, cannot forget the oil prices um, after having their worst day ever. Actually, last week they had their biggest single gain ever with a 24% jump in the, in the oil price in one day. Um, it, there's been all sorts of volatility. I can't list them all, um, but none, nonetheless, it, important to emphasize here that this is very much a trader's market. It's not an investor's market, it is a trader's market. So lots of opportunity when, they're, when the prices are moving this far this quickly. So let's, um, let's talk about the economic calendar just quickly. Um, the interesting thing about the economic calendar at the moment is that it's of no interest um, in that the data just isn't catching up with how fast the situation is moving with the coronavirus. All the attention is on how the coronavirus is going to affect the economy and financial markets. Um, so the most up-to-date data is what we should be focusing on. We've got services PMIs from the likes of Europe, the UK and the US. They will be important because clearly uh, when people are working from home, um, but also just unable to work, or just uh, governments have literally told them they cannot go to their place of work, uh, clearly the service sector is going to be affected there. And so we want to see if that's already started to happen in this preliminary data for March. And um, the other big one I want to point your attention to is uh, jobless claims. Jobless claims in the US have been around 200,000, uh, a four week average, say, of around 200,000 a week. Uh, that's 200,000 people. Uh, making a claim for jobless insurance in the United States, um, that could easily quadruple next week. Um, and there have been some forecasts that it could even be 2 million jobless claims next week, which would be absolutely epic. So just digging into those, uh, those, those topics there, um, the first one is recession. It's almost guaranteed that we have a recession in the world's biggest economy, the United States, but also probably in most Eurozone countries, particularly Italy. Uh, Italy have been in and out of recession for the last few years, even without the devastation of this coronavirus that's hit, hit the country. Um, the UK, likewise, we're watching the number of co uh, coronavirus cases go up, up every, every day, and the government response is gradually ratcheting down. We saw um, partial closure of the London Underground, um, all sorts of measures being taken to encourage people to work from home. And so that is going to be affecting economic activity. Well, we all know from our day-to-day -day life, uh, we're not shopping as much, et cetera, et cetera. This is going to affect the economy. So the question is how much and relatively which economies get hit worse. Um, for, the, uh, for the moment, the thinking is that the UK economy, because it has both the uncertainty on trade um, uh, from Brexit, and the coronavirus, the pound has been really hit, the FTSE 100 index has been really underperforming. Um, for me, that's just a fact of life. Um, the only thing that could probably turn things around for the British pound, at least in the short term, is for us to extend, the, just for Boris Johnson just to come out now and just say, okay, we cannot obviously a, a, arrange a trade deal right now. Um, well, either with the EU or other countries, it's going to take longer at least, uh, let's extend the transition period. Uh, that would, I think, would offer a bit of relief to the British pound. Um, in the United States, um, the number of cases are still going up, but it seems likely that we're going to see a, a, a drop in the United States economy of around 10%, which is quite massive, obviously, um, just for one quarter. Normally, we're looking at quarterly growth at around uh, 0.2, between 0.2 and 0.5. So that points to uh, distinct weakness on Wall Street. 
Wall Street's been the big outperformer over the last few years. Do you want to put your money in the US or Europe in, in, the, in the preparation that there will eventually be some rebound? Well, it looks like Europe is the epicenter of the, of the uh, crisis at the moment, so it's hard to see how you can justify uh, just because there will be a 10% recession in the, in the United States easily in some European countries, and as we mentioned, just the UK, uh, it could actually be even worse. So probably not much justification for that European tilt there. The only thing would be is that maybe there's a bit more room for fiscal stimulus, and that's why this uh, German announcement will be very important. They've already mentioned that uh, they are going to allow an unlimited increase in borrowing. That kind of goes against the German constitution, but it's, it, that would go a long way to shielding Germany and the rest of Europe and so maybe that extra fiscal expansion, if indeed it's possible and it happens in Europe, that would be one reason to think European shares at the end of all this can actually do better. But so I've kind of wrapped up all that, uh, the, the, the chances of recession and the, the fiscal response from governments all in one there. So that is it for this week ahead. Good luck in trading next week. Uh, take advantage of all this volatility. And of course, if you like these videos, uh, make sure to uh, register, uh, subscribe and like the video.